Uh, let's bow down and pray. Um, dear Heavenly Father, thanks for everything you gave us this um, the past week. And thank you for taking good care of us. Thank you. And we all came in with uh, no sickness. And thank you, Lord, to take care of my friend Peter in Seattle. And he is doing really good now. And uh, he has a um, first recovery surgery uh, under your care and your help. Um, Father, please help us to contain the fire that we have in California. And please help us to contain the virus as well and protect every one of us and bless us so that we won't get sick. And Lord, please help us to understand your words more tonight. Mm -hmm. And we pray in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 Yes, thank you. Well, uh, Yang Hon won't be um, that uh, he is traveling, so um, he won't be attending today. But yeah, at first I was planning to go to Seattle today. Oh, <laughs> okay. Yeah. yeah, I'm glad you're here. So, uh, almost yeah. went. Almost went. Oh, let's see. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, we're going to uh, start our study. Um, it's uh, it's uh, uh, second part of the. You know the kingdom, the dynasty of Saul. You know the dynasty of Saul, the kingdom of the old covenant. Uh, so um, just a quick run on um, last week. Um, you know what we have learned and all this, and uh, it was uh, began with uh, Samuel chapter ten, and later on chapter nine talk about you know uh, before King Saul become a king. You know what kind of person he was, and then why you know uh, why they wanted a king, and you know we touch on that, you know. and then you know we kind of gone over, uh, you know, the day that he has his anointing to be a king, uh, the appointment, and um, you know, but it was not really a, a you know looking back, it was not really a good. Uh, Good <laughs> omen for for him, you know, because um, you know the uh, the prophecy about his day of anointing. Well, you know they were good, but the prophecy about his day of um, death was not that good, you know. And then seems like you know there was a um, um, mention, you know, this and that, you know, um, about tombs, Rachel's tomb, and then later on, uh, many many chapters later. After you know, uh, King Saul died, and his bone has to be buried, uh, you know, into his father's tomb, you know, the Selsa and Selma. Yeah, you know, so those are you know things that we have studied, and um, and then until the bones of the old dynasty, the uh, old covenant was buried. Um, they, it become trouble for even the new dynasty, the, the new continent people. So, you know, a nurse, you know, we gave up trying to practice law, LAW. Uh, then uh, they, they, you know, because uh, when some people try to practice both, and uh, then the um, condemnation came. Condemnations. And uh, that is a uh, really, uh, you know, uh, bad things, you know, for new new believers, new covenant people, because, uh, you know, you don't want to bring back the law, you know, because the law in in the in the mind kind of stir up the scene and then uh, cause condemnation, cause, you know, failure. And uh, so we, we kind of gone over that, you know. Uh, we talk about the tree of table and the plain of table, you know, about the new King James and the old King James, about the, you know, the, uh, some of the details about, you know, his uh, last day, you know, after he visited the rich, uh, you know, his last day, you know, and then, you know, he died on the same day. And then, you know, we, uh, of course, uh, we visit, visit about, you know, his uh, name, Saul's name is shield. 
that means uh, underworld, you know, the grave, you know. So, you know, people that way, they, when they try to rely on the old covenant, you know, the Ten Commandments, uh, they don't realize, you know, they're in the New Testament, Paul called the uh, Ten Commandments the ministry of death, you know, rather than ministry of spirit. You know, there's the opposite. You know, ministry of spirit is life and eternity. Ministry of death is uh, the Ten Commandments. Um, so, you know, those um, seems like, you know, uh, for the last 2,000 years, <laughs> not too many people not know of it. You know, I, I didn't know about it, you know, all this number of years, you know. Uh, but uh, we are learning because uh, we are the last generations, you know, before the law comes. So, you know, we, we are Holy Spirit um, pour forth on us, you know, in this Acts uh, chapter 2 uh, about the Pentecost, you know, um, Peter said that uh, God will, in the last days, would pour forth his spirit on all flesh. And uh, so uh, your sons and daughters will prophesy. So uh, that means uh, we, we are learning more than more than the previous generations. And uh, so, you know, this, this is all, you know, uh, op open documents. Anybody can uh, study it, you know, it's not something uh, I, I just come up with, you know, and uh, we, we saw that, you know. And uh, so, you know, so the question is, how come, you know, some many, actually many Christians still suffer, you know, and uh, feel under curse, you know, and, and then, you know, we talk about, well, King Saul's, even the bones cause trouble. The bones. Hmm. So, uh, yeah, we talk about that. We talk about Kish, you know, his father's name. And then we gone back to chapter nine. We talk about chapter nine before he was anointed, you know, and uh, we visited the, uh, the, the um, tombs of Samuel which was a city of Samuel, the Rama. And uh, yeah, we talk about Kish, you know, his uh, father of Saul. Uh, and then, you know, we compare that, you know, by um, compared to the word holiness. Seems like, you know, it, uh, it imply, uh, you know, by man's righteousness, you know, King Saul like, like to practice, uh, you know, try to impress people. You know, that's a man's righteousness. You know, by your own hand, by the practice of, you know, performance. You know, but the, no one can by performance go to heaven. <coughs> no one can. So uh, we, we cover <coughs> the nine and ten, yes. <coughs> now, uh, today, uh, we're going to cover a little bit on 11 and uh, not extensively but uh, uh i'm going to ask wayne you know <laughs> we, we, we're going to have uh, you know short stuff so uh wayne uh, if you can uh, read this you know but if not then I, i'm going to ask you around <laughs> okay all right first samuel 11. yes <clears throat> then the hash the Amorite, came up and and came against Jobaz Gilead, and all the men of Jabesh said unto Nahash, make a covenant with us, and we will serve thee. And Nahash the Ammonite answered them, on this condition will I make a covenant with you, that I may thrust out <clears throat> all your right eye and lay it for approach upon all Israel. And the Spirit of God came up on Saul when he heard these uh, tidings. And his anger was <clears throat> kindled greatly. And he took a yoke of oxen and he hewed them in a piece and sent them throughout all the coast of Israel by the hand of uh, a messenger saying, Whosoever cometh not forth after Saul and after Samuel, 
so shall it be done unto this oxen. And he cheered, and he feared the Lord for on, his, uh, for on the people, and they came out with one consent. And when the numbers them be, be Zach, the children of Israel were 300,000, the man of Judah 30,000, and all the people went to Gilgal, and there they make Saul king before the Lord in Gilgal. And there they sacrifice, sanctify sacrifice of peace offerings before the Lord. And there Saul and all the men of Israel rejoice greatly. <clears throat> okay, thank you, thank you, Wayne. Now, all right. you know, uh, at the beginning, you know, um, it, it uh, talk about, we, we, you know, they talk about, um, uh, there was uh, this, uh, you know, uh, invasion, you know, the Ammonite uh, trying to, uh, uh, you know, destroy the, the uh, tribe on the east bank, like in Jordan. The Ammonites are, the, the, you know, like the Jordanian, but, uh, you know, they are tribes, uh, you know, of Israel. Uh, that uh, situated on the same side of the river. And uh, so they encamped around Jabesh Gilead, right? And, and then they tried to surrender. But in, instead of accepting the, uh, them, you know, um, they say, well, they make a really harsh requirement, you know, in order to surrender. It's not unconditional. It's a conditional surrender. And then is uh, all the men have to take out their own uh, right eyes. Wow, you know, and and that is meant to, um, you know, intimidate the rest of Israel. So that was very hard. And now, and um, by that time, you know, because uh, in chapter ten, you know, King uh, Saul already was um, anointed to be king. But he went back to farming. <laughs> he went back to his uh, own uh, city, you know, just uh, doing his own work. And uh, so, so when this thing come up, and uh, well, it said that uh, the spirit of God came upon Saul, right? Came upon Saul. Now that is very different from the New Testament. In New Testaments, the Holy Spirit is in us. The Holy Spirit is with us, through us. So, so the Holy Spirit is, is uh, you know, uh, you know, the day that uh, we believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, we confess with our mouth, and uh, we believe with our heart. Then the Holy Spirit is in us. In fact, uh, this is what the Bible say. The Bible say that. He will never leave you nor forsake you. And then he's talking about the Holy Spirit, the Spirit of Jesus, the Spirit of Christ, the Holy, the Holy Spirit. But in the Old Testament, you know, they only come upon when need be. Because uh, in the Old Testament, you know, they are all sinful men. King Saul was a sinful man. You know, all the Old Testament people are sinful men because they did not have Jesus die for them yet. There was not no permanent sacrifice, a one-time sacrifice of Son of God. Not yet. You know, so they rely on those, um, you know, like uh, every year they have to have, you know, the Yom Kippur, which is coming up. You know, the Yom Kippur uh, is uh, like, uh, this year is, uh, I think it's uh, something like October 1st or something. You know, uh, when the full moon, in fact, uh, it's kind of coincide with our um, mid autumn festival, <laughs> you know, the Yom Kippur, it, it, because it's a full moon day, right? And, and so, uh, they, you know, every year they have to, they have to have the Yom Kippur to, you know, the day of repentance, you know. Uh, so, you know, they have to have all this blood of, uh, you know, sacrifice or animals, you know, to wash away their sin and then, you know, and then still not perfectly. <laughs> but so, you know, Spirit of God cannot stay with them. You know, they just come on and then do the work 
that's why you know when David uh, offended the the law uh, by the uh, adultery, and then you know he prayed uh, in the psalm. You know he said, "Let not your heart, not not your spirit, depart from me." So even David, as much as God loved him, you know, spirit of God cannot stay with David, hundred percent of the time. That is totally different from us. Us, the uh, new covenant believers, uh, the Holy Spirit. Don't you know the Holy Spirit? Is, our body is the temple of the Holy Spirit. <laughs> so even as we sin, the Holy Holy Spirit do not depart from our person. But anyway. So anyway, the spirit of God came upon Saul, and so when spirit of God came upon a person in the Old Testament, then he can carry out things uh, for the law. So when he heard this, you know, so his anger was a was a holy anger, <laughs> was kindled quickly, and then so you know he did that. You know he um, he sent the Federal Express of you know, pieces of meat to all 12 tribes and then say, well, you don't come then, da, 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 you know, uh, and um, and shall it be done upon, you know, there's a kind of like a, a curse, you know, if uh, if you don't do this, it's a wow. If you don't do this, then then uh, you suffer, you know, because uh, they, uh, you know, that is, that is uh, you know, like when someone break the wow, and that um, you know, the, it would be like the sacrifice animal, you know. So because of that, you know, the it's not just um, just the word of it, but because uh, they are also afraid to break the covenant because they are of the twelve tribes, you know. So what Saul was saying is, you don't do this, then uh, you like breaking the vow, you know, to uh, help each other, to protect each other, da da da, you know. And so they were in uh, fear. And so, uh, so many people show up, 300,000. And the men of Judah, 30,000, right? <laughs> so you can guess, you know, whether the battle was won. And the battle was won. It was a great victory. And that's why at the end of the chapter, they sacrificed a peace offering. And everyone was happy, you know, they rejoiced great, greatly. Of course, you know, they, when they win, they won a battle, you know, of course they, they rejoiced. Yes, so uh, finally, uh, King Saul, um, you know, uh, have his uh, victory, you know, uh, if not anything else, uh, you know, this one time. And, and that is a problem, you know, when uh, people rely on the, uh, Ten Commandments, uh, Holy Spirit cannot help them. And so a lot of times, you know, they cannot uh, see uh, the supernatural miracles. You know, well, it's true, you know, in the in the Old Testament times, you know, God still helped them. But it's kind of in a limited sense because uh, it's not full time. It is not permanent. And so they occasionally have victory. You know, when when people you know say, "Well, I I can do it myself. I don't need uh, God's um, supernatural help." They don't believe in miracle. They don't believe in this and that. And so Holy Spirit hold back. You know, because uh, if you don't believe, you know, uh, there's no glory to the Lord's power. You know, there's no glory. You know, people would say, hey, "It's by my own. It's uh, because of me." You know, and a lot of times uh, you can see, you know, that they, then they glorify men's work. Now, uh, in chapter 12, up, right after 11, right, there was the victory. Chapter 12, you know, I have uh, the first words and the last words and then somewhere in between. So uh, uh, it's uh, Jerash term now, chapter 12. Okay. Um, and Samuel said unto all Israel, Behold, I have <coughs> here hearkening, hearkened unto your voice in all that ye said unto me. 
and have made a king over you. And when ye saw that, Nasha, the king of the children of Ammon, came against you, ye said unto me, nah, Nay, but a king shall reign over us when the Lord your God was your king. Now, therefore, behold the king whom ye have chosen and whom ye have decided, and behold, the Lord had set a king over you. But if ye shall still do victory, ye shall be consumed, both ye and your king. Yes, thank you, Gerard. <laughs> You're welcome. Yeah. Well, I mean, uh, the whole chapter is all 25 verses, but, uh, you know, I take the first verse and the last verse. Uh, pretty much it summarized the whole chapter. You know, it's their own, uh, by their own volition, uh, they, they wanted a king. And the reason is they saw Nahash, you know, the Ammonite, you know, wow, you know, that guy was pretty mean, you know, they, he, he wanted to gouge out people's eyes. That's pretty mean. But, you know, they, they, they would rather that kind of a king. Actually, the Lord your God was your king already. Verse 12 said that. And then so, you know, the, 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 uh, the fact of, or matter is King Saul was, you know, even though it was said by the law, uh, but actually was chosen, you know, that's their design. They, they desire someone that look handsome, look um, uh, kingly, <laughs> look um, mean, lean and mean, you know, that, that kind of thing, you know. And, uh, they, you know, of course, um, uh, it go back to the question, you know, because uh, under the uh, old covenant, under the Ten Commandments, uh, well, you know, it, are they going to follow the law or are they going to follow the king? And then if, if uh, you know, they miss, then uh, they will be consumed, both the people and their king. You know, pe people, you know, uh, or, you know, of course, everybody want to, uh, uh, their own country, their own um, uh, people to be blessed. But then a lot of time, you know, they, they, they are relying on the king. And the king cannot save them, cannot bless them. You know, only the Lord is our king. Um, but, you know, it, it's very difficult to explain, you know, to, um, um, you know, people, they are religious, you know, they are religious because um, they, they, they want to follow some man. <laughs> yeah, well, you know, so that's what happened. So basically chapter 12 is where we're clear, you know, like first verse, you guys want a king. And then if you were, you know, if you don't, you don't uh, follow the law, you know, then um, the people will be consumed. And then not only the people and the king too. Yeah. <laughs> now, so chapter 13, you know, uh, we're going to, yeah, try to uh, uh, see some more about, well, you know, because uh, chapter 11, uh, you know, uh, they have uh, one victory. Chapter 12 is, uh, you know, King Saul was colonizing. You know, he was officially installed, you know. Actually, in chapter 10, he's already, you know, um, allowed to be king. But, you know, this is like those people really like him because after the victory, of course, there are people like, you know, when when um, your football team, you know, won, won you know, then uh, you're all for it. <laughs> you become a fan, you know. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> so, so you know, that's, uh, that's uh, how, how they work, you know. So, but, you know, you go to 13, wait a second. 13, uh, something happened. So uh, I'm going to ask Wing now. <laughs> uh, uh, you okay. Know, yeah. yeah, I'm going to read from NIV. It's hard to read from yours. Okay. okay? Fine. 
Saul was 30 years old when he became king and he reigned over Israel 42 years. Saul chosen 3,000 men from Israel. 2,000 were with him at Michmash and in hill country of Bethel. And 1,000 were with Jonathan and Gilbia in Benjamin. The rest of the men he sent back to their homes. Jonathan attacked the Philistine outpost at Geba, and the Philistine heard about it. Then Saul had the trumpet blown throughout the land and said, let the Hebrews hear. So all the Israel hear the news. Saul was attacked at Philistine outpost, and now Israel has become a stench to the Philistines. And the people were summoned to join Saul in Gilgal. The Philistines assembled to fight Israel with 3,000 chariots, 6,000 charioteers, and soldiers as numbers as the sand on the seashore. They went up and camped at the Michmash, east of Beth Aven. <clears throat> when the men of Israel saw that their situation was critical and, <clears throat> and their army was hard pressed, and they they hide in caves and thicket, among the rock and in the pits of cisterns. Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay. Now, uh, I want to come in, you know, NIV, uh, you know, the, the way it was translated, uh, there's some detail there different, you know. So, uh, you know, it mentioned 3,000 chariots and 6,000 horsemen. You know? And, um, you know, uh, that's different from the other translation. And also, uh, chapter, uh, verse one, you know, there's some difference. But, okay, uh, let's con concentrate on the, uh, what is, what is all there, you know. Now, so, uh, you know, this is after the colonization uh, and after the victory over the uh, Ammonites. Uh, so, you know, Saul cannot keep uh, all these uh, 300,000. Uh, men, you know, uh, the whole, all Israel, you know, all the time. So he, he, you know, he kept a smaller army. The army is like 3,000 men. And 2,000 follow Saul in mid-match. And 1,000 uh, was uh, with uh, Jonathan in Gibeah. And in fact, uh, Jonathan is in Gibeah. And, and, you know, I highlight the, the, the sentence, Jonathan smoked the garrison of the Philistine that was in Giba, you know, Gibeah. Uh, that is their hometown. So, you know, the Philistine was uh, always stationed over King Saul's uh, hometown. And uh, there was nothing done to it. You know, they just uh, pay each other, but, you know, um, um, you know, they, 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 they couldn't, you know, uh, uh, have any, um, initiate any, any fight. And later on, we find out why. But, you know, this is very strange, you know, because uh, from 13 on, uh, you know, uh, King Saul himself cannot uh, be victorious. Actually, it's more like Jonathan. Jonathan, you know, the son of King Saul, was victorious. All right. And then, uh, so uh, before I even move on, I'm going to tell you, Jonathan is a picture of Jesus. Oh. Jonathan is a picture of Jesus. Well, we'll talk about that uh, more. We'll talk more about that. But anyway, so Jonathan uh, uh, started the, the fight. That was like, kind of like the first fight. And, and um, you know, he uh, smoked the uh, Philistine in the hometown, Gibeon, Giba, you know, same, same, actually the same name. And, but, you know, it's very interesting, you know, most people, when they heard about this, they say King Saul's. They give credit to the leader. They give credit to the king. They didn't say Jonathan did it. They say King Saul did it. You know, that is uh, one thing uh, that's kind of, you know, um, common. Anyway, so uh, now, and then you notice, you know, um, 
the Philistine you, you do not have 300,000 soldiers. You know, uh, depends on which version, you know, is a 30,000 or 3,000, uh, uh, you know, it's still not, not that many, not as many as the, the whole 12 tribes. But as a result of that, you know, uh, they, they all run away. The, 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 the children of Israel all run away. They are all stressed out. So they have to hide in caves, you know, they don't even hide in homes. They hide in caves, in the rocks, in the thickets, in the, in the forest, in the high place, all over, you know, in the, in the uh, wilderness. Uh, now, another thing is originally King Saul was in charge of make match. But now, instead of King Saul, it's the Philistine in charge of Mi'kmaq. You notice uh, the, the, the name, the place, Mi'kmaq. Mi'kmaq. Now, um, I want to uh, share with you this, uh, see if I can find it. Uh, because what happened was that uh, this uh, Mi'kmaq, is a really special place. I think this one is a, a good map. Yeah, this one. Uh, so, you know, uh, it's uh, over, over a, a pass, you know, kind of like, you know. We're going to see it. Oh, <laughs> thank you. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Okay, good. Thank you. Yeah, just in time. <laughs> now, this this is, uh, you know, a pass in between, you know, and then there's two cliff or rocks or something like that. And and uh, so on one side is meat match. On the other side is Gibeah. Well, Mi'kmaq now is occupied by the Philistine, and the uh, south side is uh, occupied, you know, by, well, you know, because uh, Jonathan smoked them, uh, smoked them out. <laughs> uh, so, so the uh, Gibeah was returned uh, to, you know, to the uh, to uh, you know King Saul, right? So, so you know, Jonathan was over here with the um, you know one guy, the armor bearer. Uh, bearer and um, all the Philistines were, were over here, you know. All right, so um, that is, um, you know, we, we're going to try to, uh, you know, see if um, we, this is in Israel or where? Uh, yes, this is in uh, Israel, you know, um, kind of well, you know, it said that it's near Bethel, so um, uh, it is, uh, you know, somewhere north of uh, uh, Jerusalem. Yeah, Giba is here. Midmash is uh, not for that. So uh, you see this, uh, there's a chasm in between. So like a Yosemite Valley, right? Okay. <laughs> you, know, you have a cliff on both sides, you know. Uh -huh. And uh, so, you know, Jonathan was uh, over in Giba, Giba, you know. And then uh, the Philistine is occupying the north. The north, you know. And um, so uh, let's go back and then um, we're going to see some more. So, uh, but they, they were in uh, chapter 13, they were in kind of like hiding. And, uh, and uh, so, you know, it's a uh, really, um, well, you know, panicky. And so, in fact, some of them run away to the other side of Jordan. And so as a result, you know, and um, um, at that time, you know, at that moment, um, you know, supposedly they are supposed to wait for Samuel to come by and uh, meet him in Gilgal. And then in order for them to have a sacrifice to the Lord. And, but, you know, of course, uh, you know, seven days passed by. And so supposedly according to that time, uh, Samuel should come and then he did not come. 
And so the people would kind of say, hey, forget it, you know, it's not going to work, you know, God is not with them, you know, da, da, da. And so uh, as a result, you know, uh, King Saul did the sacrifice himself. You remember that story? That's in uh, chapter 13. And then, you know, and then Samuel showed up. And uh, can you, uh, uh, Gerard, can you read this? Okay. Um, verse 8. Uh, verse 8, 11. And, yeah, the whole thing. Yeah. And he tarried seven days according to the set time that Samuel had appointed. But Samuel came not to Gilgal. And the people were scattered from him. And Samuel said, what hast thou done? And Sam and so said, because I saw that the people were scattered from the from me, and that thou came not within the days appointed, and that the Philistines gathered themselves together at Michmash. But all the Israelis went down to the Philistine to sepan every man his share and his coat and his axe and his matlock. That they had a file for the matlocks and for the coaters and for the fox and for the access, and to sharpen the goods, the goats. So it came to pass in the day of battle, there was neither shot nor spear found in the hand of any of the men that were with Saul and Jonathan. But with Saul and with Jonathan, his son was there found, and their garrison, of the Philistine went out to the passage of Michmash. Jesus said, all these things shall be added unto you. Mm -hmm. Yes. You know, I, I, I add on that last uh, sentence, you know. <laughs> well, you add that on. <laughs> yeah, well, you know, uh, what happened is, you know, apparently in those days, you know, uh, they were so uh, uh, putting all their time, you know, in their trade in their farming, in their business. Uh, so they were not ready to fight. You know, they they don't even have uh, any sword of spear. They don't have any weapons. That's why they panic, because uh, they're not ready, right? And and so, well, you know, without, without uh, uh, a mentality of, you know, uh, readiness, you know, they, uh, they have no way to win the battle, right? Uh -huh. Now, you know, in, uh, in Jesus' time, Jesus uh, said that, you know, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you, right? So, you know, obviously, you know, uh, you know I mean, uh, everyone has to do uh, their own business, you know, work, uh, do their, you know, uh, job, you know, and then earn a living and so forth. But, you know, the spiritual is uh, obviously more important because uh, without God's word, which is the soul of uh, spirit, you know, without God's word to bless, without, you know, sometime, you know, you, you know, you come to, uh, you know, five day Bible study or uh, listen to uh, some, some uh, you know, Bible study or sermons or something. You know, there is no manna for the day. There's no daily bread. You know, that is the trouble they have. That is what happened with the uh, old, uh, old covenant people. Uh, but anyway, they you, you notice that they also, you know, uh, King Saul tried to bring uh, uh, Samuel, say, because you're late. <laughs> so instead of, you know, uh, take on and then say, well, I make a mistake, da, da, da. You know, you know it's their old common people. They, they like that too. Now, uh, there are so many times 
it mentioned about mid-match. The word mid-match uh, is the place. But, you know, uh, in chapter 13 and then later on chapter 14, you know, it keep on talking about, oh, this is a place. And and seems like what happened is, if you, you, you think about it, uh, the meat mesh is a little bit like the heart. You know, when the uh, Saul, you know, initially he occupied meat mesh, but you know, when enemy come, when, uh, when uh, you know, something happened, you know, uh, like, you know, uh, maybe a family got sick or when uh, there's a crisis, uh, when you know uh, we uh, we don't know how to deal with you know certain things happen, and it's like as if you know the the enemy, which is um, the devil, was in the heart, take over the taken over the heart, and then you know when people are panicking, and without without the faith in the heart. Then, then that's where the trouble. So meat mesh is a little bit like the heart. You know, I don't know if it makes sense, but um, uh, this is this is the you know uh, the uh, explanation. You know, the uh, the meaning of meat mesh is uh, sort of like a hiding place, some place that uh, you put in, you put in uh, all your goods, you store some of the things. Meat mesh means uh, is a uh, is a higher way thing a place, you know that that is the the explanation uh, for meat mesh. So it come from commas, and then you look at that, you know that is like a, a storage, some something that you you put away your stuff. Okay, now, so you know in uh, in Jesus time, Jesus talk about. Uh, you know, uh, there are, you know, Matthew and John. So um, I'm going to ask Wayne to read Matthew and John. Okay. But lay up for yourself treasure in heaven, when neither moth nor rust doth corrupt, and where thieves do not break through <clears throat> nor steal. For where your treasure is, there will be your heart be also peace i live with you my peace i give unto you as the world giveth giveth give i give i give i give i unto you let not your heart be troubled neither let it be afraid okay thank you uh -huh. so you know seems like you know um, the focus of jesus preaching was that, well, your heart is, you know, in, in, uh, in your uh, spiritual life, in your life dealing with uh, troubles, dealing with everyday, you know, uh, living, uh, your heart is very important. And then your heart is where all your treasure is, where you store up things, you know. And, and so, you know, peace, you know, he associates the peace and with your heart. In other words, you know, I give the peace unto you. And then let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. You know, so in other words, your heart is, is uh, you know, the higher way place. So I would suggest to you, that is what the meat mesh is about. Now, if you compare uh, uh, the, uh, what happened in chapter 13, what happened in chapter 13 was when the uh, Philist, you know, initially King Saul with, uh, you know, uh, thousands, uh, three, 2,000 men is in, uh, in uh, is uh, came over mid match. But when the enemy comes, when the enemy comes, uh, well, when there's uh, the battle started and, and the enemy would just basically come into the heart, you know, spiritually, but also physically <laughs> in King Saul's case. And then, you know, basically they occupy it. And so the Philistines control their heart. 
And then so everyone is distressed. They were all hiding. They were so afraid. So, you know, it is uh, kind of like the analogy that meekness, uh, the, the way, you know, if you uh, meditate on it and you will find meekness is like uh, spiritually your heart. Now, the reason I, I bring this is uh, the guy I prepared. Uh, why, you know, when we say Jesus, uh, uh, Jonathan is a picture of Jesus. So, Mimesh is on one side, and the other side is Gibeon. Now, in chapter 14. Uh, now, now uh, I guess this is uh, four, verse four, five, six, and seven. Uh, I guess it's uh, Gerard, your turn. <laughs> okay, and between the passages by which Jonathan sought to go over unto the Philistine garrison, there was a sharp rock on the one side and a sharp rock on the other side. And the name of the one was Bose, and the name of the other, Senan. The forefront of the one was situated northward over against which which mesh, and the other southward that over against Gilbeam. And Jonathan said to the young man that bear his armor, "Come and let us go to over unto the garrison of these uncircumcised." And maybe that the Lord will work for us. For there is no restraint to the Lord to save by many or by few. And his armor bearer said to unto him, Do all that is in, the, in thine heart. Turn thee, behold, I am with thee according to thy heart. Yes. <laughs> <coughs> so, so. So what's happening is, okay, well, you know, the, um, uh, if meat mesh is the heart and then the Philistine is occupying, the enemy is occupying the heart, then uh, they, they, you know, they have no peace. They have, they are, you know, they have no hope. Now, Jonathan is one person and then the armor bearer, a young man, you know, that has no name. Uh, you know, was with him. And, and so, you know, they come up with, well, you know, if we can cross over. Okay. Now, you know, it, it's, uh, you know, he, he said, you know, very clearly, you know, he is willing to die. It may be, it may be that the law will work for us. For there is no restraint to the law to say by many or by few or even by one. You know, there were only two people. <laughs> and then there were, you know, 30,000 um, Philistines on the other side. You know, so, you know, that is uh, like impossibility in terms of, um, you know, man's rational uh, mind. But, you know, we are talking about the law. Actually, I, I, as I said, you know, Jonathan is a picture of Jesus. And the reason is, Okay, first of all, by the way, the armor bearer, the unknown person, unnamed person, is the, actually like the Holy Spirit. And then so, you know, Holy Spirit was saying that, do all that is in your heart. Turn thee, behold, I'm with thee according to thy heart. You know, this is, you know, if you think about that, this is the, what the Holy Spirit would say unto you, you know, when you, are, you have a journey ahead of you, you need you need God's uh, blessing. You need the protection. You need the blessing and healing and provisions. You know, with a, with that journey, that is what the Holy Spirit would have said to you. You know, so anyway, the armor bearer. You usually in the Old Testament times, a lot of unnamed per, uh, servants is the Holy Spirit. You know, but you know we we won't get into that. You know, because um, uh, we have. Uh, other more important uh, uh, things. Uh, so I, I'm I'm saying, you know, this is a picture of Jesus. Now I'm going to give you more. 
And now you just read that, Jura. You know, you 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 know, it's uh, like one of the rock has a name called Boses, and the other name is Sene, right? Mm -hmm. And then um, it kind of <coughs> the two clips, right? And then you, if you read the original um, Hebrew, the Senet and then Boses, the Senet and the Boses. And then the, the meaning of the Senet is, well, even though it said uh, uncertain derivation here, actually oh. it's a uh, very strange, you know, Senet is the same word as the burning bush, the bush. Burning bush. Yeah, burning bush. When 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 did the burning bush show up? When the Moses saw the Lord. Yes. When the Moses saw the law, the Lord was speaking to uh, Moses from the burning bush. Mm -hmm. So so the Senate uh you know, even though this is represent a rock, a cliff, like on one side of the uh, of the chasm, you know, uh, with the big, like uh, the canyon, you know, the canyon in between. But Senate also represent the uh, Moses, the law, the burning bush, uh, you know, the Exodus, uh, 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 you know, account. The Exodus account basically is uh, the like the given of the uh, Ten Commandments. So Senate is the old covenant. Uh, I, I will show it to you later. But Boses, Boses uh, actually means uh, uh, shining, shining. So because of what happened is on the north side, the sun always shine on it. So when you, uh, you know, over there, you would always see the, this is on the sunny side. The sunny side is always the north side, uh, the north side of the cliff, because the sun, you know, is um, generally uh, on, on this, you know, from the equator, you know, shine from the equator. Right? So, so the further you go north, and then the sunny side is always the north face. The bosets is uh, meaning shining. So in other words, even those words uh, represent something, you know, shining means uh, glory. So when Jesus uh, was crucified, buried and risen to heaven, you know, that is the glory of the Lord, <clears throat> the shining, <laughs> risen, you know, resurrection, you know, like in the future, we're going to be, you know, join up with him in midair. You know, that would be a shining. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> that would be a, you know, you will see the sun, you know, shine, shine on it. You know, it's very bright. So, so what happened was, uh, this is 5573 Senate, right? This is the Old Testament, the, the bush, the fawn, you know, the burning bush, you know, the same word. And it turned out 5573 five, is here. 5572 five, actually is the same word. And this is the burning bush, Exodus chapter 3, verse 2. The bush. See that? So, so in order for uh, the victory to be won, Jonathan have to come out from the old covenant, cross over the impossible canyon, and then get on the glory, get on to glory, get on the, the shining, and then reason to eternal glory. So, so even those uh, two, two names of the two rock, actually, you know, is a, is a picture of, um, you know, the old, the whole salvation plan, our Lord Jesus. So Jonathan is, you know, the reason why uh, Jonathan is a picture of Jesus also is because 
if King Saul, if Saul is the old covenant, it will present the, the people, uh, the Jewish people, the Hebrews. And then Jonathan is a son of the Hebrew people, like son of God becomes son of man. And so Jonathan is like, you know, come out from the Hebrew nations, uh, like Jesus. He's like son of King Saul, Jonathan. So, so there is a, a lot of uh, analogy, you know, that the, the, because the Lord like to, uh, you know, paint all this picture about him, you know, in, even in the Old Testament, you know, in different chapters and different books. <laughs> so, Santa, Santa, we know, you know, the, the strong confidence is pretty good already, but they also miss this. It's really the same word. See that? So, so the, the set up a, you know, same word. You know, the bush, the burning bush is also the name of the rock. So it's jump from when someone have to jump from, uh, the old, old covenant. Uh, the Old Testament into the New Testament is mm -hmm. like jump from the rock. It's impossible for men, but Jesus did it for us, you know, to, to jump from the old covenant, the 10 commandments into the grace. From the grave, G-R-A-V-E, into grace, you know, the blessing, G-R-A-C-E. <laughs> Oh boy, you know, I, I'm just telling you, you know, there's so much stuff, you know, that, uh, you know, so, so going back, yeah, King Saul, you know, is uh, very religious, you know, so, uh, you know, he tried to, you know, um, supposedly, you know, do all these acts of uh, religious things, you know, like, you know, he, he, he keep waiting and waiting, waiting, and then, and they were scattered, and so, you know, he take over. The uh, the uh, of, uh, altar, you know, the sacrifice, which he's not uh, supposed to do because uh, he's only king. You know, in the Old Testament, kings cannot be priests, and the priests cannot be kings. Uh, they are all assigned by God. You know, if you are king, you know, you you, you it's not necessary you can be priests. Um, you know, unless uh, you know the law call you to be. But in the New Testament, it's different. New Testament is because Jesus is both king, king of kings, and is not the great high priest. And so, you know, we are also kings and priests. You know, we are kings and priests. Uh, so, so there's the, you know, we, we don't really have to, in the New Testament, we don't really have to rely on the middle man. You know, there's no middle man. We, we are kings and priests because we are in Christ Jesus. And Christ Jesus, is kings and priests. But in, in the old religion, it's divided very carefully. You cannot be a, a priest uh, or high priest, you know, uh, unless you're Levites. And King Saul, King Saul was Benjamin. <laughs> so, so he doesn't qualify. So, you know, he break the law left and right. You know, there's a trouble, you know, you, you try to, uh, observe uh, all the Ten Commandments and all 600, uh, uh, you know, uh, laws and uh, regulations, and uh, no one could. They all miss something. You know, you cannot do it 24 hours a day. Mm -hmm. You know, we all know that. So, so uh, you know, someone uh, quickly uh, read this. Um, who, who, who is, uh, is it uh, Gerard or Wing? <laughs> I, I read, yeah. Okay. <clears throat> and Samuel said, what hast thou done? And Saul said, because I saw that the people were scattered from me and that thou came not within the date appointed and that the Philistine gathered themselves together at Michmash. Then Saul said to the people who were with him, now call the, the row and see who has gone with us. And when they had called the rose, surprisingly, Jonathan and his arm bear were not there. And Saul said to Abijah, 
bring the art of God here. And at that time, the art of God was with the children of Israel. And Saul came to Saul, and Samuel came to Saul, and Saul said unto him, Blessed be thou of the Lord. I have performed the commandment of the Lord. And Samuel said, What mean then this beating of the sheep in my ears? And the lowing of the oxen which I heard, I hear. And Saul said, They have brought them from Amalekites. For the people spared the, spared the best of the sheep and of the oxen to sacrifice unto the Lord thy God. And the rest we have utterly destroyed it. Okay. Yeah. So uh, this is uh, all talking about. King Saul like to talk back, you know, uh, like the old common people, you know, they say, uh, yeah, we have to observe, 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 you know, we have to obey, obey, obey. And then, you know, usually end up, you know, they, they're going to miss something. And then by that time, they're going to bring somebody, they're going to say, ah, uh, you know, you, uh, you're you wrong, you know, and uh, they, they're going to, uh, you know, uh, give an explanation why they, they did not obey, you know, so and so on and so on. That, that, that's a, you know, the old common uh, way, because that, that is the way how the fresh, why the, our fresh dwell no good things. You know, if uh, we are by our own righteousness, uh, we, we are trying to practice law, then um, it's, you know, we end up uh, have to defend ourselves. You know, we say, uh, this is not true, I'm very good. Now, but you know, the middle, the middle uh, uh, portion here is very, very special. Um, he he uh, did not realize uh, who went over, only two persons, and uh, Jonathan and the armor bearer. And so, you know, they have to talk to uh, God and then God uh, somehow give them that uh, uh, revelation. But at that time, they say, bring the art of God here. And then, you know, the, 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 uh, the book uh, writer, you know, tried to explain that the art of God was with the children of Israel. Now, he said, bring the art of God here. Okay. Now, I'm going to hold this place and then I'm going to say they don't have the art of God. At that time, they don't have the art of God. Now, uh, it was the true art was not in Gideon. They don't have it. Now, this is uh, what was said in uh, David's time. Uh, uh, two different verses. Uh, uh, Gerard, can you read that for us? For the tabernacle of the Lord, which Moses made in the wilderness, and the altar of burnt offering, were at that time in the high place at Gibeon. And let us bring against the ark of our God to us, for we we for we inquired not at it in the days of Saul, and all that con congregation said that they would do so, for the thing was right in the eyes of all the people. David's time. Yes. Now both uh, both verses uh, in the uh, First Chronicle is uh, during David's time. Now, uh, this one is an observation of David uh, uh, people that, uh, yeah, they, they don't have the art of God in Gibeon, but they have the rest of the, like the tabernacle, the altar, everything else uh, was in Gibeon. You understand? Now, but the art of God was not there. You remember what happened? What happened was that uh, when uh, Samuel was uh, growing up, uh, the uh, the uh, the children of Israel lost the ark to the Philistine. They went to a battle and they lost big time. And then so the uh, the the ark of God was uh, captured by Philistine. And then somehow you know uh, because of sickness and judgment, and the Philistine returned the ark. But he never went, went to back to the tabernacle. The tabernacle, you know, uh, 
at at uh, source time was in Gibeon, yes, but there was no nothing inside the holy of holies in source time. And apparently, King Saul didn't even know that. He didn't know, you know. See, the holy of holies is all empty. Uh, you know, uh, supposedly you have only one piece of furniture. The one piece of furniture is the Ark of the Covenant, which represents Jesus, represents the God with us. You know, uh, you know. So the uh, out of the common represent Jesus and, you know, represent, but, you know, at that time, the tabernacle was all empty. You know, they, they can do all the worship, but, you know, they are not worshiping the Lord because uh, the other covenant is not even, even inside the Holy of Holies. <laughs> so, so King Saul said that, you know, he, he, he's, uh, actually didn't even know, you know, that uh, they, they, they don't have the other God. Not, not in Gibeon. In, that is the reason why in this uh, uh, First Chronicle 13, and it said that uh, they really never inquire of the other God during days of Saul. They never did. And, and so, David said, "Oh well, let's let's get it back uh, from the uh, uh, current uh, Yarin. Uh, that that is the, the the place where the other God was stationed uh, in the in the <coughs> old time, long time in the uh, in the among the wood trees, you know. And uh, I'm going to show you uh, possibly where where they were." Now you saw the meat match here. <laughs> uh -huh. Now, uh, this is Gilbert. Uh, You know, a little bit north for Jerusalem, right? Gibeon. Uh -huh. Gibeon, you know, where, where Saul was stationed and then meat match is over here. Remember last year, uh, last uh, week, you know, we talked about the two more Samuel. Two uh -huh. more Samuel is there. Nabi Samuel. And then this is Kiria Yarin. Kiria Yarin is the woodland where you know they abandoned uh, the other god here a long time among the trees. Yarin means a woodland, you know, the place of woodland. And so the other god was stationed here. And then later on, David said, "Let's move it to Jerusalem. Let's move it." You know, when when he uh, uh, took over Jerusalem as the uh, capital, and you know, say that, so he said, "Let's move it, you know, from uh, Kira Yarin to Jerusalem." But you know, when when Saul was saying, uh, "Let's get the other God," you know, this is like what uh, almost uh, you know, fifteen kilometer, seventeen kilometer by by driving. <laughs> So, so he, he doesn't even know what he's saying. Now, there is a picture also. Uh, the old covenant people, or you know, even some churches, they, they don't really have Jesus in their heart. You know, they say, they say, oh, I'm a Christian. But in their preaching, you know, they don't talk about Jesus. They talk about, oh, uh, what's the country going through, you know? Uh, how how do we oppose uh, that one scene? You know, there's one scene that is worse. You know, so they talk about this, talk about the ten uh, one commandment, ten commandments. You know, the uh, you know uh, you know talking about you know the judgment of God. You know, and they don't talk about Jesus. So you know, it is sort of like you know the tabernacle without the art of the covenant. <laughs> That's why in uh, in uh, King Saul's time. You know, it seems like the prayer is not answered on time. Seems like uh, nothing worked on time. You know, the clock is always slow. <laughs> they wait, wait for Samuel and Samuel, even Samuel was slow. You know, didn't make it uh, on the seven days, you know. And, and so that is the problem because 
Why? Because uh, they, they, they don't have the supernatural help. Because the other the covenant, you know, they, they, they talk like spiritual. They, they talk religion. Bring the art of God here. <laughs> and, and yes, the art of God was uh, in, the, in the land of Israel, but it's not uh, within the, you know, uh, uh, their assets. You know, they, they don't even know the, 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 uh, the, the tabernacle was there. The the uh, the uh, you know all, all the pieces were there. The altar, the altar that uh, of, of uh, offering is was there, but you know there was no Jesus. That's the trouble. <laughs> so so that's why the religious religious act of you know even the you know a lot of denomination or. Or the religious act of, of the uh, old common people, the, even the you know very religious, very devoted uh, you know Jewish people, you know they 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 seems like they have some trouble, you know seems like you know how come I don't get blessed, you know. Now I'm I'm going to share with you uh, today's news. <laughs> you know, in uh, in our study, you know, we always share about today's news. <laughs> Or this week's news. Uh, are you guys uh, looking at this? I saw it. I saw it. More than 3,000 people. Yeah. That's shocking. Highest in the world. Yeah. Now, one uh -huh. if, if, they, if, if they are right with the law, the Yahweh, uh, the Bible that they be, believe, you know, the Old Testament, how come they suffer that much? Now, it, and it's not just that, you know, like I said, you know, they, they, um, you know, like in New York, New Jersey, you know, in some of those places where they have really devoted, you know, you have to admire them, you know, they are very devoted. And then even like Paul was saying, you know, Paul want them to be saved, you know, but their, their knowledge is wrong. You know, why? Because they don't know the Lord. You know, they don't have the art of the covenant in the temple. Why now they don't have the temple? They are bowing to the wall, which is, um, uh, I hate to say that, the, the wall is the, uh, the Roman uh, leftover fort. You, you know what I'm saying, you know, the Fort Antonium. <laughs> so, so when, when, you know, they, 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 you know, they, that is that kind of faith, you know, you think God is impressed? No, because the law is, the father God is really in love with his son. And then, but he spared not his son for the sacrifice for all people. You know, he really loved the, you know, Jesus really loved the, the uh, you know, the, uh, the, the, the Hebrew people. You know, it's not like they, he doesn't want to save them, but they reject them. They, they, they just don't want to believe. They rather believe in the old covenant. You know, that is the that is the problem for the world, and that's the problem for them. Yeah, you you saw that, right? This is today's news, right? Am I wrong? I saw it in the Israel news channel. Um, ah, yeah, yeah, September fifth. Yeah, I, uh, I I I yeah. I I get on YouTube and look at the Israel news channel every day. Oh, uh huh. Yeah. So As Sarah too, you know, I said Sarah has a very good news too. Yeah. You know what is Elsa Sarah? Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. 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 Oh. So, you know, um, you know, the Lord really loved them, but you know, when they are in old covenant, it's sort of like King Saul. King King Saul, you know, Saul the shield. You know, who who want to uh go go into the grave, you know, sad and then not blessed and then have no eternal life. You know, I mean, you know, it's 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 already done, you know, Jesus already paid. You know, that is, that is, that's what happened you know, when the people have religion. Now I'm not talking about just the, the uh, you know, the old covenant people, but I'm also talking about all the other religions, you know, because only Jesus saved, you know, uh, you know, it doesn't matter if he claimed a Christian or, you know, other, other uh, Buddhists or whatever, you know, only the name of Jesus saved, that's why, you know, uh, we we um, um, want to make sure we we think the same thing. 
yeah. So, uh, yeah, you know, so like, you know, if you look up in King James or some of the translation, very reliable, and then you look for the Amen, it's, the Amen is only with the curses in the Old Testament. No, no blessing. No blessing. No blessing. You know, but in, in, uh, in the New Testament, in, after Jesus was raised from the dead, uh, and went up to heaven, sitting on the right hand of the, our Father. Wow, man! You know the blessing is every chapter, every book. You know, <laughs> you know the only problem is a lot of time. You know, we 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 thought it was uh, just a you know nice language, you know Shakespeare language. No, it is for real. This is God's word. God's word is blessing. Amen. All the amen and all the yes is for blessing in New Testament. And, you know, I already shared with you also from Jerusalem Post, you know, uh, the Jerusalem Post, you know, uh, in, uh, before Pentecost uh, Sunday, uh, you know, they have an article talk about, they, they don't recite the Ten Commandments anymore. Long years, thousand years, more than thousand years. In Jesus' time and before in the Old Testament time, they recite the Ten Commandments. They even put it in their front net, you know, uh, between their eyes on the little box. You know, this is uh, take up from the Dead Sea Scroll, you know. And, and so, so, you know, but you know, no one can, can uh, stand the, the judgment of the Ten Commandments. No one. And, and so, you know, yeah, because that they represent the, the absolutely highest standard of the requirements of God's righteousness. But, you know, now, you know, well, well what happened? What happened is, yeah, we, you know, the law, the law is for the spiritual, uh, you know, is for the second dynasty, the eternal kingdom of the law. It's all Jesus. <laughs> yeah, that's why, you know, I, I, I'm still amazed, you know, because uh, Galatians is the only church that get to rebuild, uh, you know, that, um, you know, all the other church, you know, however kind of they are, even the Corinthians, they, they are called saints by Paul. They are saints <laughs> because the righteousness was given to all saints, you mm. know. But Galatians, they, they, they say, no, we have to practice 10 commandments. Galatians, uh, they have to go back to the old covenant. Boy, you know, that is the only one that got the, the you know, um, the foolish, uh, you know, the foolish people, you know, the stupid people. So, so see, you know, uh, in uh, Revelations chapter three, Jesus is the law of Amen in Revelation chapter three. So in other words, when you say, uh, and you are in sync with uh, Jesus, you say, the, you know, he's my Lord. So every Amen is, you know, is, uh, you know, go straight to him. And that's why the father is happy to accept that kind of prayer. Because, uh, you know, Jesus uh, uh, make, make it perfect for us. Yeah. Mm. Well, you know, I think I think um, you know it's very clear. You know, I think um, we are kind of like the, you know, in the Old Testament, right? In the Old Testament, you know, when Rachel was born, I, I mean, uh, Rachel uh, given birth to. Uh, the second son, uh, he originally called him the Ben Lonely, which son of my sorrow. And then when Rachel died, and then uh, it become Benjamin because uh, the father say, no, his name is son of my right hand, Benjamin. So, you know, basically uh, you, you can see, you know, the Old Testament Benjamin, the Old Testament Benjamin is uh, very mean people. You know, they, they kill, uh, they are very good uh, warrior. They, they, you know, like, you know, uh, mm. 
and uh, they become uh, like like uh, King Saul, you know, become a king, you know. Uh, the, he was a actually able to fight battles, you know, even though he rely on the three hundred thousand soldiers. <laughs> when it's three thousand, then he's in uh, very scared. <laughs> but you know, in the Old Testament, you know, the Benjamin uh, Achilles, very good uh, fighter. They can handle the fire with both hands. They can handle handle uh, weapons with both hands. <laughs> but you know, in the New Testament, Saul you know, become Paul because uh, Saul, you know, is no longer the same. Same. Well, he's from the tribe of Benjamin. He's from the tribe of Benjamin. But instead of like a wolf, you know, uh, eating up all all the uh, you know everyone around, eating up all the fresh. You know, killing people, uh, hurting people, he become the uh, the guy that's divide the spoil, spread all the good stuff, like the Santa Claus, <laughs> <clears throat> blessing thousands and millions of Gentiles to be uh, to be in the kingdom of the Lord. So the Benjamin in the New Testament is a blessing, but the Benjamin in the Old Testament is a you know, is a uh, cause trouble. Yeah. So you know, ben, you know, but so that's why we are Benjamin of the last generation because Saul become Paul and we we become Christian because of the letter. Uh, that was he he wrote for for the Christ in heaven. You know, Paul was uh, the the letter uh, writer for 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 our Lord Jesus Christ in heaven. Right. That's why all these people believe. You know, every 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 hamlet, every country, every race become Christian because of Paul's letter, the New Testament. Yeah. So uh, you know, uh, oh, by the way, you know, uh, uh, of course, uh, you know, uh, we we are truly thankful, you know, that uh, you know. Uh, uh, like, like even in the uh, time of Jonathan, John, Jonathan was, uh, you know, a picture of Jesus, you know, and uh, so, you know, he, with the armor bearer, just two, you know, like Jesus with the Holy Spirit, you know, he, they went forth and crossed the impossible canyon, crossed the impossible canyon and jumped from the burning bush, Senate, to Moses. You know the, the the glory, <laughs> the glory. You know the glory is, you know, uh, is uh, you know the other side, and that was the the great victory, you know, uh, of the of the Bible, you know, because of Jesus, and the Holy Spirit work on on you know on the people of the world, and but in the meantime, you know, it's uh, it's so sad, you know, every time, uh, when uh, in the Bible. When Rachel and Rama, uh, Rama was mentioned, uh, Rama is the, the tomb of Samuel, right? And then so, you know, uh, when when that was mentioned, you know, people suffer, you know, they were dead uh, in, the, in the Old Testament time. Now you say, uh, well, what happened in Matthew? Matthew chapter two, uh, Rama was uh, crying and Rachel was crying. And uh, would not be comforted because Herod wants to kill all the babies under two. You remember that? Yeah. So, you know, under the Old Testament, you know, the Benjamin is not a good thing. But after Jesus resurrected and then we risen up to the heavens, then, um, you know, you know, every day, you know, the Lord wants to bless you and love you. You know, that is uh, because uh, we are, we are the children. Of God, we are the we are sons. Of God. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. <laughs> okay. Well, um, you know, I I think uh, we pretty much covered this, but uh, you know, I want to share, you know, that before we go, um, you know, you remember we talk about Babylon, uh, uh, Lebanon, uh, uh, quite for a number of weeks, and then we talk about uh, President uh, Macron. The French president, uh, you know, take a very, um, you know, uh, special interest in uh, Lebanon. 
And um, I don't, I don't realize that, but you know, uh, this is uh, something I found uh, in the uh, in the in the internet, you know, just for for your interest. Apparently, uh, President uh, Macron, before he become a president, Uh, I, I, uh, let me see if I find it. Oh, yeah, right here. He, uh, he come up with the term Jupiterian presidency. Uh, you know, when he become a president, he doesn't want to be a normal president. He want he want to be a Jupiterian president. <laughs> mm -hmm. You know what the Jupiterian means? <laughs> Jupiter, something to do with Jupiter. Yes, and the Jupiter is what long as the god of heavens. Oh, <laughs> he he want to be a like a, a like a, a god. Uh, kind of president. He doesn't want to be a normal president. Hmm. Jupiter is uh, uh, the Roman religion. Before Jesus come, you know, before the Christianity, they worship those uh, Roman gods, and Jupiter is the biggest of them. And there was pattern other seers, the Greek god, you know, seers. Which is the god of thunder, god of lightning, god of uh, heavens, mm. and that is the one that uh, 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 stole uh, Europa. You you remember <coughs> Syrian princess? That was the the same same uh, thing, you know, <laughs> god so so to speak, you know. So that's why Jupiter was the chief deity of the Roman state religion before Christianity. So, so this is very strange, you know. He he wants to be a like a you know like a going back, well you know either by whatever reason. Now of course uh, his uh, first name is called President. Uh, no, the first name is uh, Emmanuel. Emmanuel is, uh, is from the Bible it means uh, you Amen. know he's God uh, with man, right? So. Uh, and then Macron uh, is uh, actually Macron turned out, you know, is uh, his last name is uh, is a dash nine. Macron. Dash. Macron means a uh, like a uh, 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 horizontal line, you know, it's like a almost like a minus sign, you know. So Emmanuel Macron is like um, Christ negative. <laughs> Oh boy, I, I don't know what that means. But anyway, what they uh, let's uh, have a closing prayer. Okay. Yeah. Uh, I'm going to pray for uh, uh, Yang Hon, you know, his girlfriend, and then other people too, I'm sure. Girlfriend, not wife? Huh? You have one and his girlfriend, or did you say wife? Oh, no, I, I, I'm traveling. Okay. Yeah, I'm traveling, definitely. Lord Jesus, I'm, I'm, I thank you for uh, today's uh, Bible study. And I thank you for, um, you know, um, the Holy Spirit blessing us, you know, of uh, all those uh, understanding the word of God. Lord, open our hearts and open our, uh, and uh, keep our hearts from our fear. And, um, you know, the Lord uh, uh, blessing on, on uh, everyone there then, and uh, blessing on Gerard. And, um, you know, and his uh, family, 
and blessing on Wayne and all other people as well. You know, those people that uh, listen to the, uh, that the sound of my voice in the name of Jesus, I pray for blessing on them, healing, protections, and uh, provision. Lord. And uh, I'm praying for other people as well, Lord. Uh, I, um, I come to you and, um, uh, Lord, you know, I'm praying for the um, uh, church in Scotland, and um, and um, Lord, you know that um, you you know uh, they all need your uh, blessing and healing. And I'm praying for and, and I'm thankful for uh, Peter Yun, and that uh, he's recovering. And then I'm praying for uh, that uh, you give him a, a full full recovery and a blessing on him, and then that they all look to Jesus and be blessed. So um, I just come to you and uh, ask you to be with us every day, and um, and then uh, we also remember, you know, um, you know, near this uh, end time, you know, um, every chance we can, you know, we want your name be glorified, that uh, you 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 bless, uh, uh, you know, and use us as your kings and priests, uh, that uh, we can share the glorious gospel, and uh, we know Jesus did uh, all the finished work. And uh, so it's a blessing is uh, for those who who believe and then receive it. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Um, I, uh, Amen. 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 Thank you. Thanks yeah. for your hard work for tonight. Yeah, well, thank you, Jesus. <laughs> you know, it's all from the Lord, you know, it's, um, you know, it's, uh, it's amazing. Yep. Uh -huh. yeah. Well, so, uh -huh. What you think about Israel is now friend with uh, Saudi Arabia? Well, you know the um, uh, you know this is some of the steps you know that uh, uh, some of the people want want to have a one world uh, government in the in the in the uh, seven years or tribulation and all that. So, but hey, you know we we are you know we are just looking to the Lord you know because um, the Lord with uh, be with us and then in time you know he's going to rapture you know all everyone that believe in jesus christ mm -hmm. and um so you know we're not going to go through all this you know because the, the lord is my shepherd and yours too right the yeah. lord is my shepherd i don't care you know i i mean i you know every chance i can you know i want to share our, our belief and uh, because uh you know it's a it's a saving grace it's a grace it's not great right you know it's not G-L-A-V-E, like the old covenant. It's a G-L-A-C-E, you know. <laughs> yeah, so, uh, um, yeah, don't, you know, it's, it's um, you, you don't have to worry too much, you know, because uh, there are all kinds of bad news, uh, sad news and fake news, right? You know, I mean, yep. you, you watch it, but, you know, every time you watch those things, uh, you, you, you kind of go back to the Bible and say, wow, you know, our Lord is wonderful. Our Lord is good. You yeah. know, He is a mighty, mighty, uh, our mighty Lord. You know, He's with us. He's with us. Nobody can be against us. <laughs> huh? yeah. yeah, yeah. God, God bless you. The Lord bless you, uh, Adira, and uh, everyone yeah. you, you know. Thank you.